Hey guys, and welcome back to the only channel bringing you BMAT tips and tricks to make it through the schoolhouse. Today you were probably just as stumped as I was when first looking at RC and RL time constants. In fact, they still get me sometimes. Enough about me, let's get after it. Time constants help us to see if we are working with a good or a faulty component as a direct measurement using a multimeter is not possible. Time constants indicate the amount of time a component takes to charge or discharge. In the sample below, the charge path is indicated by the blue line and includes a power supply. The discharge path is shown in red. One time constant, or one TC, is an equal length of time. To calculate one TC, the formula for capacitors R times C. It takes five TC for a component to fully charge or fully discharge. If we start with a charge path, we would perform the calculation 3K times the capacitor value, 15 micro, to get 1 TC of 45 milliseconds. Now to get the full charge time, we take the value 45 milliseconds times 5 to get the full charge time. Now each TC corresponds with the percentage of charge located in the table to the right. This table is also on your formula sheet. The line going up indicates the charge graph and the line going down indicates the discharge. 1 TC is 63%, 2 TC is 86%, and so on. Notice that the level of charge indicated at the first TC is 63%. An example question could be, what is the level of charge on C1 at the first time constant? To find this, we would do applied voltage times the value at the first time constant, and that'll give you the level of charge. Now if the question asks what is the level of charge at 135 milliseconds, you would first need to find the TC and divide the time given in the problem by your 1 TC value. This is how it would look. Since we already know the 1 TC for the charge path is 45 milliseconds, take the time given, 135 milliseconds divided by 45, and that gives us 3 TC. Go to the percentage at 3 TC and multiply that by your applied voltage. Now to move on to RL time constants. RL time constants are very similar, but instead of finding the level of charge, we are concerned with the level of current growth and energized time, or de-energized time. Finding TC is L divided by R. Again, each TC is an equal length of time. In the example, 60 milli divided by 6K gives us 10 microseconds. To find the level of current growth, we then calculate IT. In the example problem, we took 60 volts divided by 6K. Once we have IT, we take IT multiplied by our percentage at the first TC, 63%. This gives us a level of current growth at the first TC of 6.3 milliamps. Rinse and repeat for the de-energized path utilizing the components in that path. This brings us to the phase relationship between capacitors and inductors. First, let's start with a series circuit. A series RCL circuit contains a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. The voltage between the capacitor and the inductor is 180 degrees out of phase. Now do you remember how we determined what component was dominant in a series circuit? In a series RCL circuit, it will be resistive and the most dominant reactive component. In this example, the capacitor has a reactance value of 9K, so the circuit will be resistive capacitive. Easy enough. Now for parallel RCL circuits. A parallel RCL circuit contains if you're about to say a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor, you would be right. If not, you haven't been paying attention. Current in a parallel RCL circuit is going to be 180 degrees out of phase. The circuit will be resistive and the least dominant reactive component. In this case, the circuit is going to be resistive inductive. That was a lot to chew on today. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to see more tips and tricks, and as always, Stay classy and keep your head up.